Sorry, I'm a bit sick today, so I didn't get ready too much and my voice might sound muffled, but let's get into it. You could have been making mock-ups on Canva for months or years, but I guarantee at least one of these tips you did not know about. And if I'm wrong, I don't know, you can yell at me in the comments or something. And I will say I've arranged these tips from cool to extra cool. So each one I promise will get better. And the last one I just discovered today and it absolutely blew my mind. So make sure to watch to the end. For those of you who are not too familiar with what mockups are, they are blank photos of the product for print on demand that you are going to sell. So say you had a sweatshirt, you would save this and then you can upload your design. So pretend this is my design. I would arrange it on the shirt and then I would save this and use as my photo, say for my Shopify photo or my Etsy photo. But now let's get into the more advanced tricks. So one thing you can do is on all your mockups, the first little point I like to keep here is that I like to keep my mockups group in the same file. Then I like to have a placeholder design. So I put just this rectangle box. This can also just be the last design maybe you put in here. And the reason I do this is because now all I have to do is drag and drop my image in and it applies all the effects that that box had. So right away, my image is already positioned, it's already sized, and it's already tilted with the angle of the model. If I wanna swap it again, same thing. I just drag in my photo and push it over the last design and it will rewrite it. So down here again, I wanna add it in and there we go. So instead of constantly having to bring in your designs, resize them, rotate them, this is an easy way to just drag and drop. My next trick is to deal with wrinkles and inconsistencies in a shirt that will make your design look not realistic. So I have this design here, but I am not a fan of some of the creases in the shirt, the dip in the shirt that gives it that dark spot. Because for my mock-ups to look realistic, I want my mock-up to be as flat as wrinkle free as possible so that when my design is on it, it looks realistic. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab the photo. I'm gonna hit edit photo. I'm gonna go to the new magic eraser and then I'm gonna increase my brush size and I'm going to paint over any wrinkles in the shirt that I am not a fan of. I wanted to change around this area. And there we go. Now my shirt looks a lot more flat. So when I place my photo, it's gonna look a lot more realistic because I'm not having to deal with the bends and the difference in shading of the shirt because of the lighting. Here's another one for example. This one, not a fan of all the creases in the shirt, but what I'm gonna do is click, hit edit photo. We're gonna use a magic eraser. We are going to highlight over the parts we want removed. Let's do this piece and then we're gonna do this piece over here as well. And now let's do this one. And there you go. Now you have a much smoother sweatshirt. And P.S. you can get both of these mock-ups along with eight others for free in my links right in the description. And they already have the wrinkles removed. You can also use this tool if they have a necklace, for example, that you don't like that is in the way of your design. So this one's not too bad, but some people have included very long necklaces. And what you can do is click the photo, edit photo. We're gonna go to magic erase. And then we're just gonna trace over the parts that are covering the necklace that we don't like. And I'm gonna try it with this to get as close as I can. And there you go. It's not perfect because I did it quickly, but if you zoom in and get really fine with it, you can fine tune all the edges and get this exactly how you would like it. The next is the use of what I call the Canva Smart Mockups. You actually do have to buy some of these on Etsy, but they are a perfect way to create certain designs, say for ornaments, say for blankets. I've seen some for pillows, but especially for Tumblr mockups. So I have this one right here and the mockup is actually just this top photo. So it actually has nothing behind it, but what it does have is it has effects applied to it with a transparency. So when you bring in photos and you drag it up, it actually looks curved and you can see different reflections in the photo. So on Etsy, I just looked up Canva Smart Mocks. I don't actually know if that's what they're called. I know it's Smart Mockups Photoshop, but people seem to also use it for Canva. And if you scroll down, you're going to find some fun ones. So there's ones for phones where you can drag and drop. We have the tumblers that I just showed you. There's candles. I've seen pillowcase ones. 
there's puzzle ones, and all it is is a file, and then you drag and drop your design behind it, and their design actually applies on top of it and applies this effect to make it look like the design or the product that you're planning to sell this on. On Etsy, I even bought a smart mock-up Canva video file. So they've already created the file and the video. All I had to do was drag in my file over here. So I just cut the screen a bit and then I drag in my photo. I'm just gonna go to say this here. I'm gonna drag it over here, make this large again. This is what it's going to look like and then I can use this as my Canva video. This one is highly dependent on what products you're planning to sell, but take a look through them because some of them are gonna blow your mind. For our next trick, let's talk about how we can get a design behind hair because a lot of mock-ups have hair in the way and just fully getting rid of the hair will sometimes ruin the image, but adding or design slightly under the hair might make it look even more realistic. So the first thing I do is I actually clip my mock-up just slightly so it's not the full background. Otherwise, Canva will a lot of time lock this to the background, which is what we don't want right now. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna do copy and paste that mock-up just right on top. And then on the top layer, what we're gonna do is we're gonna click, we're gonna get an edit photo, and then we're going to go to background remover. And then we're gonna hit this little tools button that comes up on top of the background remover. And then we're gonna hit erase. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna zoom in and we're going to erase all the areas that we know our design is going to be in. So we know our design is around here. I'm gonna avoid the hair. I might have messed that up a little bit. We can restore it after and just wherever you think your design is going to be. Ours is really small, so I'm gonna make it a small space, but it depends on your design. And then over here, I'm just gonna resize, restore this a little bit. And there we go. Now I'm going to hit backwards. And now you can see that our design is actually behind the hair, but on top of the model. How does this work? We have our original file in the background, but now we have this top layer that we're going to align perfectly that has the hair that is actually covering your design. If your layering is not correct because it needs to be background photo, design, the top hair layer, you need to go to position, you need to go to layers, and from here, you can drag the different layers in your design. So we can move the design on top of the hair, and then we can move it under, but the design does need to be sandwiched between the two layers. And my last little mock-up trick for you, which I think is a super cool one, is if you have a mock-up and you love it, but nowhere can you find a matching one for a different color. So let's say I have this mock-up here, I love it. I cannot find the same mock-up with a black shirt, but I want all my mock-ups to match. What I can do is on Canva, I'm gonna go to edit photo, we're gonna go to magic edit, and I'm going to paint over the whole maroon t-shirt here. And then what I'm gonna do is hit continue, and then we're gonna type make it black or whatever color you would like this to turn into. And we're gonna hit generate. And now we have four different versions here. So slightly lighter, this one looks a little bit more realistic to me. This one has a little bit more wrinkles to it. So I think I'm actually gonna go with this one here. Meh, I'm thinking this one here. And now I have that exact same mock-up with that t-shirt in the exact same style, but a different color. And I can repeat this with multiple different colors. This one's not perfect with every color and every single mock-up, but it works pretty well. You just have to regenerate if it's not giving you the exact results that you want. And I do highly recommend still only doing this if there is no option out there for a color that you are looking for, because they're not quite as realistic for some of the colors as getting an actual mock-up photo from the person who took that original one. Thank you guys so much for listening and let me know in the comments below if you knew any of these or which ones actually shocked you. Thanks and I'll see you next week.